Look at your smartphone right now. Chances are high it is running Android. If not, it's an iPhone. We live in a massive duopoly, but it wasn't always this way. The road to Android's total dominance is paved with the corpses of operating systems that once held huge promise or even ruled the world. They didn't just fade away, they were actively destroyed by the explosive growth of Google's green robot. In this video, we are digging up the graves of the major mobile operating systems that tried to fight Android and lost everything. Before we dive into these fallen heroes, I want to know your history. Did you ever own a phone running one of these dead operating systems? Let me know in the comments below which one you missed the most. If you enjoy tech videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video so we can keep exploring tech history together. Now let's look at the first major casualty. To understand how massively the landscape has changed, we have to start with the original king, Symbian. Before the iPhone and before the first Android device, Symbian was not just a competitor, it was the default. It was the operating system that defined what a smartphone was for huge parts of the world, largely driven by the sheer unstoppable force of Nokia. In its golden age, Symbian was on everything from serious business communicators with full keyboards to multimedia powerhouses like the legendary Nokia N95. It had true multitasking, a recognizable interface, and a vast library of applications long before the term App Store existed. However, Symbian was built for a different era. It was architected for devices with physical keypad, where you navigated through lists using a directional pad. When the capacitive touchscreen revolution hit in 2007, Symbian was immediately transformed from a market leader into a dinosaur. Nokia tried frantically to update it. They released Symbian versions that supported touch, like on the Nokia 5800 Express Music, but it always felt like a bandage over a deeper wound. The operating system was incredibly complex to develop for under the hood, boasting millions of lines of legacy code that made quick modernization nearly impossible. While Android was rapidly iterating, pushing out massive updates every few months that refined the touch experience, Symbian was stuck in the mud. Developers began to flee the platform. Why would they spend weeks fighting with Symbian's difficult coding environment when they could build an Android app in days and reach a growing audience? The death blow came famously in 2011 when Nokia CEO Stephen Elop issued his burning platform memo. He declared that Nokia was standing on a burning oil platform and needed to jump into the icy waters to to survive. That jump was to Windows Phone, effectively announcing to the world that Symbian was a dead end. Sales collapsed almost immediately after that announcement. Android didn't just beat Symbian, it made it look instantly obsolete, turning the unrivaled king of mobile into a forgotten relic in just a few short years. While Symbian ruled the general public, BlackBerry OS ruled the business world. It is hard to overstate just how addictive these devices were. They were dubbed Crackberries for a reason. The incredible physical keyboards and the exclusive BlackBerry Messenger service made them indispensable tools for anyone who needed to get work done on the go. For a long time, BlackBerry executives dismissed full touchscreen devices like early Androids as mere toys that serious people would never use for real work. This arrogance was their undoing. As Android matured, it didn't just get better games and media apps. Its email clients, calendars, and secure messaging improved drastically. People started bringing their personal Android phones to work and demanding their IT departments support them because they hated carrying two devices. BlackBerry realized too late that the physical keyboard was not enough to save them. They tried to pivot with BlackBerry 10. It was actually a very modern, gesture-based operating system that was arguably ahead of its time in some ways. But it launched into a world already divided between Android and iOS. The app gap was insurmountable. Major developers like Facebook and WhatsApp eventually dropped support. BlackBerry even tried a desperate last stand by allowing their phones to run Android apps through an emulation layer. But the experience was slow, clunky, and buggy. It only served to remind users how much better a real Android phone was. Android destroyed BlackBerry by proving that a touchscreen device could be just as productive as one with a physical keyboard, while also being infinitely more fun and versatile. BlackBerry eventually surrendered completely, switching to making Android phones themselves before exiting the hardware market entirely. Perhaps the most tragic story on this list is Windows Phone. Unlike some others that were dated or poorly thought out, Windows Phone was actually an excellent, forward-thinking operating system. Microsoft saw the threat of iPhone and Android and knew their old Windows mobile software was dead. They scrapped it entirely and built something new from the ground up. Launched in 2010, Windows Phone featured a radically different interface called Metro. Instead of rows of static icons like iOS and Android, it had live tiles. These were square blocks that would flip and animate to show 
show you information right on your home screen without you needing to open the app. You could see your next appointment, new emails, or weather updates at a glance. It was fresh, it was incredibly smooth, even on weak hardware, and it was highly secure. Microsoft poured billions into this ecosystem. They eventually bought Nokia's entire mobile division to ensure that high-quality Windows phones would keep being made, leading to iconic devices like the Lumia 1020 with its massive 41 megapixel camera. So how did Android destroy it? It was a classic vicious cycle known as the app gap. Because Android already had hundreds of millions of users, developers made apps for Android first. Because Windows Phone had few users, developers didn't want to waste money building versions of their apps for it. And because the phones lacked essential apps like official YouTube, Instagram, or Snapchat for long periods, regular people didn't want to buy the phones. Microsoft tried everything. They paid developers to make apps, they built their own replacements, but they couldn't stop the bleeding. Google actively refused to support the platform, ensuring their popular services were either missing or terrible on Windows Phones. Android offered variety, customization, and every app imaginable. Windows Phone offered a beautiful, smooth experience that was a ghost town in terms of third-party support. Microsoft finally admitted defeat, ending support, and advising their remaining loyal fans to just switch to Android or iOS. Not every OS destroyed by Android was an industry titan. Some were contingency plans that never got deep enough traction to survive the onslaught. This is the story of Bada. Around 2010, Samsung was already making Android phones, but they were uncomfortable with how much power Google was gaining over their destiny. Samsung has always liked to control its own hardware and software, so they developed Bada as their in-house alternative. Bada, which means ocean in Korean, was actually a surprisingly decent operating system. It was launched with the Samsung Wave S 8500, a phone that featured beautiful hardware for its time, including one of the first Super AMOLED screens. The OS itself was visually similar to the TouchWiz skin Samsung was using on its Android phones, which was a clever move. It meant users could switch between a Samsung Android phone and a Samsung Bada phone without feeling totally lost. For a very brief moment, Bada actually outsold Windows Phone globally because Samsung pushed it aggressively in mid-range devices in Europe and Asia. It was lighter than Android, meaning it could run smoothly on cheaper hardware but it suffered from a fatal flaw that killed many others, the ecosystem. Samsung tried hard to get developers on board, but with Android growing exponentially, nobody wanted to build apps for a proprietary Samsung-only operating system that might not exist in five years. Android destroyed Bada by simply being too universally adopted. Samsung eventually realized that fighting the Android tied with Bada was pointless. They needed the massive app ecosystem that Google provided to sell their flagship Galaxy S phones. Bada was quietly discontinued, with parts of its code eventually being merged into the Tizen project, another Samsung OS that would eventually fail on phones but find some success on smartwatches and TVs. Bada drowned because it couldn't offer anything better than what Android already gave Samsung for free. The final major attempt to break the Android stronghold came from an unlikely source, Mozilla. Firefox OS was born from a purely idealistic vision of what the mobile web could be. The idea was revolutionary in its simplicity. Mozilla believed that you didn't need complex native code to run apps. They believed the web itself was powerful enough. In Firefox OS, everything was a web app. The dialer you used to make calls, the messaging app, the camera interface, they were all essentially websites written in HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS running locally on the phone. The goal wasn't to compete with a thousand dollar Galaxy flagship. The goal was to bring smartphones to developing markets where people were still using basic feature phones. Mozilla wanted to offer smartphones that could cost as little as 25 US dollars. It garnered a lot of initial excitement from mobile carriers who were essentially desperate for any alternative to Google's growing control. Devices like the ZTE Open were released in markets in Latin America and parts of Europe. Sadly, the reality didn't match the dream. While the idea of a web-based OS was noble, the performance on such incredibly cheap hardware was often frustratingly slow. It turned out that even very cheap Android phones, while not perfect, offered a much smoother and more capable experience than the first generation of Firefox OS devices. Furthermore, the rapid decline in the price of entry-level Android components meant that the price gap Mozilla was banking on closed very quickly. Android destroyed Firefox OS by becoming cheap enough and good enough that the alternative wasn't needed. Users in emerging markets didn't want a half-baked web phone. They wanted the same same real Android experience they saw advertised globally, and they were willing to pay just a little bit more to get it. Mozilla officially killed the project as a commercial smartphone OS in late 2015, proving that good intentions 
aren't enough to beat a juggernaut like Android. Looking back at these fallen operating systems, it is astonishing to see how totally Android managed to conquer the market. It defeated the incumbent giants Symbian and BlackBerry by being more modern and versatile. It defeated the well-funded challenger Windows Phone by having a better app ecosystem. It defeated Beta and Firefox OS by simply being better value and more universally adopted. It is hard to imagine any new operating system ever challenging this dominance again. If you enjoyed this trip through mobile history, please smash that like button. It really helps the channel. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you never miss our next video. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one.